Welcome to the Jagman Podcast. It is February 7th on a cold, snowy, snowy day in here in Victoria. I got a special guest, Freddie H. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, so uh, you were talking about uh, the Toronto Raptors not making the first round, and uh, that's fine with you. Um, basic, what? yeah. So basically, uh, why is that? Well, I think they'll make the first round, but I'm not too sure if they're going to make the top four. Top four, yeah. Well, right now, currently, aren't they like in fourth or fifth place right now? They they drop from second to fifth. Well, that's, that's exactly what I mean. They're on a down. Yeah, they're on a slide. Do, uh, can you agree that they're, they're like one player away from from actually taking down the East Eastern Conference? I think they're more than one player away. Really, eh? I think they're young guys, Siakam, and uh, the, uh, Jonas is doing pretty well. Yeah, I think they got the center covered pretty well. Uh, they emphasize too much on DeRozan and Lowry, as far as I'm concerned. Whenever they get stuck, instead of moving the ball, yeah, they rely on one on one, and I don't think any team's gonna win that way. Yeah, that makes sense. What about like, um, okay, so now uh, now it's kind of like looking like would you have paid Demar Derozan twenty nine million dollars per season? He's great. He's, he's, he's an all-star. There's no two ways about it. And Lowry is almost as good as far as I'm concerned, but they've got to move the ball better. I mean, look at the good teams. Look, look at even Cleveland. Look at Boston moves it. Uh-huh. And no, no offense mentioning the Warriors because that's all they do is move it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going, which is my team, which I always love. Yeah. <laughs> no matter who they have, they're right up there. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, so okay, so now we discuss the Toronto Raptors. They're not going to make the playoffs, or sorry, they're, they're well, going to make the, the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to make the I'm playoffs. Sure they're going to make it, but I don't know if they're going to win the first round. They're not going to be home team. So okay, if if the playoffs started today, then basically you would have because they're in third place, they would face Indiana Pacers. So who would you pick uh, between Toronto Raptors and Indiana Pacers? If Indiana holds, I'll pick Indiana. Oh really? Eh? What about okay? So speaking of the uh, the Eastern Conference, Washington Wizards faced the Cavs last night in a blockbuster game. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it was amazing. It, they took them down t- to overtime. Yeah. And so it was just kind of like okay. I was watching the whole game. I was amazed because no one has ever ever has ever pushed LeBron that much since Indiana Pacers of 2012. In 2013, sorry. They Washington's got a good team. I think I don't recall exactly. I don't really recall every team, but I think they've only lost eight or nine games since the first month or so. Yeah, they're 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 like 16 and one in their last 17 games. Yeah, I know. I know they're coming good, and they're they're moving the ball. Wall is doing well. The Beal guy did really good yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And then they got Otto Porter, and then yeah. they got. Uh, I forget. They're, they're gonna be tough. So, I was talking to my buddy, and he said basically they are one player short from taking the East. You're talking Toronto? No, 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 no way. <laughs> uh, talk, talk, not a chance in hell. Toronto needs more than one. Yeah, I'm talking Washington Wizards. Like I, like I said, I never paid much attention to them until they started winning lately, you know, in the last month or two. Yeah. So. I've, I've actually been involved in, in more football. So now that I've done, you know, I'll get down more into basketball and hockey. Yeah. No, is it, the thing is, like, okay, we talked about the, uh, the East. I already know this, but who do you see coming out of the West? Who do I see coming out of the West? Yeah. I would say Warriors. Yeah, exactly, right? So, like, I don't see anybody who's going to challenge them. Well, you know what? They might, if they play the Spurs in the final, uh, sorry, in the uh, Western Conference Finals, I could see the Spurs taking two games. Probably. I don't think they're deep enough to beat KD and all those slash boys and all that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, Draymond Green's got to keep his temper 
uh, on check. Yeah. Did you, did you see that clip? Yeah, yeah, I saw that clip. I was I was amazed because I was just like, Me okay. Too. It's like uh the whole world's watching. Every, there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. You know it's going to get caught, right? But yeah, no. But no, I thank haven't, I haven't I haven't heard too much more about it, so I probably, probably will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's going to be in... Be really quiet about it. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be in the in the headlines all week long. It, it it already is, so basically everybody's talking about it. But we'll see what happens uh, uh, tomorrow, I guess, right? But uh, yeah, and thanks a lot, Fred. Um, we'll, uh, we'll tune in next time, and hopefully you can do another podcast with us. Okay, Jack. Have a good day. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, so that's about it we have for Fred. Let's go jump over to uh, my man, Rajan Parmar. We're going to dial him right now. We're live. <laughs> and we're going to talk about basketball NBA. Hello? Rajan Palmer, you're on the air. Don't swear, okay? <laughs> hey, so, so get this, okay? Um, basically, I kind of want to know your your thoughts on uh, LeBron James calling Frank Ice, Frankie Ice. I'll call him Frankie Ice, okay? <laughs> I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Frankie Ice, calling him trash. Well, basically, I think it's one of those situations where LeBron is trying to kill the messenger, not the message. Yeah, right? I, I think I, there, I think you're telling me in the last year and a half, LeBron James has never gone to the management and said, "You know what? You know, if you become to it, trade Kevin Love for Cabello." You don't think he, you're telling me he never ever said that one time? Maybe he hasn't said it recently, but not one time he's never said that. Yeah, right. So I have a hard time believing that. I think I think there's got to be some truth to that story, right? Now. Has, his, has LeBron's mind changed? Maybe. Right? Maybe you come to the realization that, hey, you know, let's just mellow for love. You know, if we're going to get mellow, let's get mellow without giving up Kevin Love. Yeah. Let's try to pull that off. Right? So maybe he's, he's probably, maybe his position has changed. But I'm, but I'm pretty sure at least one time in the last six to 12 months, LeBron James has thought, you know what? You know, we're going up against Kevin, we're going up against Kevin Durant. Let's bring in Kamala Anthony. Right? But do I think he's, Pushing for it every single day? No, but um, but I but something tells me LeBron or somebody in LeBron's camp said to management at least one time, "Hey, you know, if, if it comes to it, if they're really insisting on it, maybe the send love and love out for mellow." Okay, but here's the thing, Kay. Do you? Because I think we both can agree, mellow is past his prime. I'm sorry. I I I think we both can agree, mellow is past his prime. Oh yeah, he really didn't step slow. It's just the thing is, would you trade him for a Kevin Love, a younger Kevin Love? However, the guy's back is just screwed up. Honestly, it's not. A, I don't think it's a good deal for either team. I don't think Cleveland should do it. I don't think New York should do it. New York shouldn't do it because Kevin Love, first of all, Porzingis is still has a, lot, has a long way to go on defense. Right? You still need to get a little bit better on defense. So let's say you do the deal. You're the Knicks. You got Porzingis at center and Kevin Love at power forward. They're not going to stop anybody. Straight up, they're, they're going to be giving up so many points. Yeah, you're going to score a lot. You're going to give. You're going to be giving up a lot of points. That's bad. That's not a good combo at all. And also, like you said, Kevin Love is a bad bat. Okay, so I don't think if I'm Knicks, I, I don't even do that deal. If I'm Knicks, I'm pursuing a deal with the Celtics. I'm getting at least one of the Celtics picks from them. Celtics have like 15, 20 picks. You can't get one off them. Well, yeah, but the thing is, okay, so how many picks did they have in 2016? They had a bunch, and they all turned out to be sleepers. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like the the one the one uh the one guy, um I can't remember his name. Uh they they drafted him. He was supposed I think they drafted him thirty first because the Lakers were thirty second. So they drafted him and all of a sudden boom, the guy turns out like he he was a good shooter but they waived him on his birthday and then he ten days later he signed with the Bulls. The Bulls waived him five days later and he's gone. Oh yeah, I forgot his name. I, I, I totally forgot his name, but the thing is, it's just kind of like, dude, um, you had all these picks, and prior to 2016, you could have made the blockbuster deal of a lifetime. Trade all yeah, those so, picks. But, but Jake, don't they have more picks on the way? 
I th- I think honestly they have 2017 they're done. After 2017 they're done, and 2017 is a very deep draft too, right? Yeah, they're definitely Boston. I'm sorry, New York's definitely not getting that next pick. Celtics are Celtics are definitely not giving up that pick. Yeah, but you know what? If if uh, if I was Phil Jackson, I yeah. would I would ask for that pick straight up for Melo. That's it. Really, able? What if what if that pick turned out to be fucking superstar? Yeah, yeah, but then again, like uh, Melo is a superstar, don't you think? Yeah, but Melo, I think Melo's declining though. Huh? Melo's got what two more years left. Huh? That guy you draft is gonna be like a top three pick, and the Brooklyn Nets suck. Yeah, it's true. Right? They, or maybe they're probably going to be the number one pick. Imagine you're the Celtics. Let's say you go to the... Let's say you get bounced in the second round. Oh, well, well, no problem. We're getting the number one pick. Yeah. I don't right? know. So, I mean, like... like if, I, if I'm if I'm Danny Ainge, right? I think Phil Jackson wants Jay Crowder. Don't give up Jay Crowder. Right? You keep him. If you're going to bring in Carmelo Anthony, you need Jay Crowder to cover up for Carmelo on defense. Right? But maybe, maybe part ways are Avery Bradley. Yeah, but the thing is, if I'm mellow, right? You got that yeah. New York Boston beef. You had that in baseball, right? Yeah. And yeah, so you had the crowd. Why would you want to go to Boston? That's like. But the hair to think. Yeah. That's like, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, Big like Poppy going, going to Boston. freaking New York. Yeah, yeah. No, and I hear what you're saying, but man, you got to put. These are desperate times. You got to put that shit to a side. Yeah. Did you, man, did you read Kevin Ding's article earlier? No, I haven't. Even, I haven't looked yeah, at it. Yeah, that's the one that Phil Jackson commented on Twitter. Basically, Phil Jackson implied that Kevin Ding's article was right, and that he compared Carmelo to a player he coached in the CBA, a player who didn't fulfill his potential. That's a low blow, man. Big time. Yeah, Phil tweeted that right, and basically the article is Kevin Ding questioning Carmelo's desire to win. He goes, "Man, if you really about winning." You never would have. You never would have forced your way to New York in a trade to begin with. You never would have resigned with the Knicks, and you had a better offer, better opportunity in Chicago to play with a younger Noah, a young Rose, a younger Rose, or Jimmy Butler, all those boys. So uh, Gibson, you could have been playing with all those guys. So it's just kind of like okay, well now. Basically, the article says that Bill Jackson discovered that you were no MJ and Kobe, and now he's regretting it. Yeah, but. But but but, but uh, my whole thing is, Phil, fans like us, we know that Carmelo was no Michael, no Kobe. Right? He, so how, like, how did you not know? You're 11 time champion. Here's the thing. Yeah, exactly, right? Here's the thing. He's a perfect Robin, but he's not yeah. a Batman. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. You see what I mean? Like, thing yeah. is, he's a great sidekick. Like, one of the best sidekicks in the world. But he's yeah. no superstar. He like he's a superstar, yeah. but he's not like an alpha male superstar like LeBron or Kobe or Michael. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like Kevin Ding said that I think Carmelo went to New York to mainly for his um, off the court brand to build that up. Well, because if if you research it, they he's got tons of uh, tech companies. Oh yeah, tons. I heard it's like he's set up really nicely off the court. And that's all in New York. Every single yeah, one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Right. That's what they're saying. Like, some people are looking at Melo and like, dude, like, no one but no superstar gets put up with this crap in New York. And you're just sitting there just taking... Hey, Rajan, Rajan, you're... Uh, Rajan, your, uh, your reception's pretty bad. Oh, I heard it better. Oh, there you go. Yeah, perfect, perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, like, a lot of people are looking at Melo and like, no superstar would ever put up with this kind of losing, with this kind of drama. They would have forced away out by now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So basically, sense. there's three teams that I know of that are that are talking to the Knicks, right? I don't even know how serious it is, but I, the thing is, Cleveland, Clippers, Boston. Yeah. Right. So basically, I don't know, like, like, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, like, the Clippers. I heard they, even with the Clippers, that's how you go to the Clippers, right? Yeah. The Clippers have lost seven of their last ten. Yeah, because right? Chris Paul's not there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Chris, yeah, Chris Paul's not there. But my point is that. They're gonna get out in the first or second round of it. I don't. I don't see them in the conference final. So, right? do you see Chris Ball leaving? No, because I don't. I don't see anyone. I don't see any major marquee free agents leaving anymore. I think free agents are gonna suck. Remember those? Remember those? Remember oh, those yeah. summers where we all get excited about free 2017 agents. free agency is bad, man. No, but overall, like going forward, like I think everybody's gonna sound with their, their teams because if you leave your team, you're looking 
a hundred million dollar pay cut. What 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 basketball player can take a hundred million dollar pay cut? Exactly. Hey, so check this out. Check this out. We got three games in the NBA tonight. I want to know your opinions on all of them. I, I don't know if you saw the scores or not. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is a really really bad uh, question. Who do you think won between the Hornets versus the Nets? Uh, Hornets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about the the uh, the Magic visiting uh, Houston Rockets? Yeah, Houston didn't they win? Well, it's they're just starting the fourth quarter right now. It's ninety four eighty six, and I'm, I'm I'm surprised because Magic is only eight points shy of tying it, and Houston has James Harden. So far, he's got twenty five points. Four rebounds, nine assists, and they're just oh, starting wow. the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rockets will definitely win that. And who's winning the Portland game? Okay, so it's halftime. Portland's visiting the Mavericks. The Red Hot Mavericks are losing, uh, fifty-three to sixty-four. Who do you think is going to win that one? Uh, I'm going to say Portland because Dallas beat them last week. Uh huh. So, so what do you point to on Damian Lillard? Have? Uh, Damian Lillard is at. 22 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists. What about Yogi Ferrell? Yogi Ferrell. Yogi Ferrell. What does he have? Uh, didn't He signed a 2-year deal, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember how much it was? No. Can't remember, right? Yeah, neither, neither can I. Um, Yogi Ferrell. Hold on 2 seconds here. He's got... To, He's five for nine, and he's got fourteen points. But he's a minus. Yeah, this guy for real? I've uh, never like heard of this. Like, this guy can't come out of nowhere out of the D league. He's out of the D league, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yogi Ferrell guy let Damian Lillard up last week for thirty-two points. And like, how how tall is this guy anyway? By I think it's six feet. Wow. Yeah, I think I could be wrong. He looks six feet to me. Really? Yeah, he's kind of skinny, but I don't know. He's scoring points somehow. So, okay, um, in the East, we got the Cavs, big surprise, number one spot versus, if they did a playoffs today, they'd face the Detroit Pistons. Oh, There's no be a sweep. Yeah, that's a sweep, right? Boston versus yeah. Chicago, second versus th- seventh. Who do you got? I got Celtics in five. What about Toronto versus Indiana? Ooh, this, this will go either way, man. Because Indiana almost beat them last year. I know. Eh? Um, oh, you saw you saw Paul George. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, no, I'm gonna say Raptors in seven. And Washington versus Atlanta. Oh, I'm gonna say Wizards in six. Yeah, you know what? Wizards are on a killing spree right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're they're awesome, eh? I like you. Know, I was watching first take earlier. You check it out later. It's really good. All NBA topics there. Oh really? They're, they're really hyped. They're really hyped. Yeah, it's all NBA stuff. Like most majority, eighty percent of the show is NBA. Talking about the Wizards. Stephen A. Really excited about the Wizards because he says they're going to go to a conference finals. He said, I'm really? really? You're looking at a six, six. Yeah. He said you're looking at a six seven game series as wow. well between Cleveland and Washington. Either Cleveland and six, probably maybe seven. Wow. Okay. So what about yeah, the... my main concern for Washington is their bench. They're dead last in bench minutes. Well, see, that's the thing. They need to pick up another guy, man. Yeah, they got this. If they're serious about competing, they need one. To, they're they're saying they're one player away, maybe two away from winning it all. From like from like being a championship contention. So what about uh, what about? Um... They're saying they're starting five is one of the best, like statistically, one of the best starting five in the entire league. It's it's their it's their bench that bring that that hurts them, man. It's kind of like reminds me of the Indiana Pacers with Paul George and David West were there. Like their starting five will kill it. And then they put their bench in, and then LeBron and we always go on a big run against them. Remember those days? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, the bench would always bring them down. Well, so here's the thing, though. You have to be thinking you need another player. Yeah, you have to. Even or not, man, I, I don't expect those teams that don't make moves. Well, that's the thing. When you're that close, you pick me up. When you're that close, yeah, do it. exactly. Well, you know for a fact they're super close. Like they, yeah. they, the, the the game last night, they were just like, wow, they almost yeah. took them down. Yeah, it was like point versus point, point versus shot after shot. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, in the in the, we're not, not scared, man. No, they're not. No, but they need a bench. Right? They need exactly. a sixth man. That's what they needed. They need a sixth man. 
And they, they need a Jamal Crawford, a Nick Young, a Lou Williams, like those kind of players. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Lou Williams, do you think he's on the trade block or what? Honestly, with the Lakers, I don't know what's going on with them, man. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't know. They're they're sort of in you know they're sort of in limbo. But they they need to they need to sort out their front office situation first. Right? True, so but the thing is, the time. Lakers are they're very silent when it comes to trades. Very silent. Yeah. They you never know uh, what they're what they're what they're doing. Yeah. Not... They're saying that uh, Jerry West is a free agent this summer. Uh huh. Golden State Warriors owner said today. He's waiting to he's waiting to extend them. He said, we'll, we'll sit down, we'll talk to him. But there's all they're saying that Jerry West is also interested in speaking to the Lakers if they want to talk. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see how that goes. Oh, for sure. But uh no, what's it called? Um uh what about the West? What are you thinking about the West here? We got uh Golden State versus Denver Nuggets. Who do you think's gonna win? <laughs> Warriors Warriors gonna sweep. Uh Warriors gonna sweep that way. What about Spurs yeah. versus Oklahoma City Thunder? Well, I think Spurs and five. Memphis at this is going to be an awesome one. Memphis at Houston. Oh, that's going to be really good, man. That's I, don't know, I, I, I think I, that's going seven, I, man. Yeah, I, I'm going to say Houston and seven, but don't rule out an upset here. No, I, like the thing is. The thing with Memphis is, basically, they have um, length. They have all the length in the world. It's crazy. Yeah, but no, um, uh, basically, that's all about the time that we have for the NBA session. I'd like to thank uh, Rajan Parmer, and uh, next time we'll hopefully have you in. Take care. Bye. Not too sure what happened with the with the Bluetooth there, but uh, Rajan got caught out, cut off in the last couple of seconds. But basically, what it is is I just uh, just trying to go over the, some of the uh, some of the uh, matchups for the for the uh, Eastern and Western Western conferences. We got that done. Let's go over tomorrow night's games if we shall. We have Matt, oh wow, we got tons of games here. We got uh, San Antonio at Philadelphia. I'm predicting um, predicting San Antonio to. Not too sure what happened there, but we got Tony on the NHL topic. Tony, welcome to the show. No worries. So let's jump right into it, um, if you shall not mind here for a second. We have NHL. Tell us what is on the scoreboard tonight. We got the Habs and the Habs going at it again today. Uh, Avalanche are actually up 2 nothing in that game, which is a little disappointing. They're a bottom feeder te- team. I'm hoping that the, the Habs can pull something out there. Lightning are absolutely dominating the Kings 5 nothing. Um, the Kings are actually doing are a good team this year. Lightning, surprisingly, not that strong. Um, Maple Leafs and Stars, Leafs are up 3-1. Clues are routing the Senators, 6-0, uh, which is a big lopsided score oh there. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, the? that's a big one. Um, I'm surprised that the Senators are putting up a goose egg in that game. we got the Blue Jackets and Wings tied up at 2 with a minute left in the third. Canucks are obviously losing to the Predators because they're the Canucks and they don't know how to play hockey. <laughs> we've got the Jets and the Wild here. They're at 3-2 for the Wild. Wild are an absolute dominant team. I, I really have a high hopes for how they're going to be for the upcoming year. And in terms of games that are over, uh, Sabres beat the Sharks 5-4 in overtime, which is a bit surprising, but good for the Sabres. Uh, Rangers up 4-1 on the Ducks, which is actually really a good tilt. Flames reluctantly beat the Penguins 3-2 in overtime. Um, I know you're probably not a Flames fan, given that you love the Oilers. Not a chance uh, in hell, man. Yeah, they pulled out the shootout win today. Matt Murray didn't get the win. And the Capitals absolutely destroyed the Hurricanes 5-0. Um, Alex so Ovechkin just being the stud that he is. So, uh, the games today were rather predictable, aside from a couple of them. Um, I think that the, of the game that already happened, uh, it's nice to see Ovi get a goal and an assist in today's game because Netsoff potted one in as well. Um, for When it comes to teams that are, that are currently you know, at the peak of their the peak of their game. I was looking at the, the standings here. Um, in the Metropolitan Division, they're honestly stand out from 
from any other division, just in terms of teams overall. They have the Caps, the Pens, the Jackets, and the New York Rangers, all of those teams being ahead of anybody else that's available in the East. So if you look at the standings right now, all three of those teams, all four of those teams, pardon me, have more points than any team that's in the East. So Montreal is 68. They're first in the Atlantic. New York has 69. They're fourth in their division. Uh, so there's a big discrepancy between what the Metropolitan has in terms of its talent compared to the rest of the Eastern Conference. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question here. One thing that stuck out to me was the Washington Capitals beating the Hurricanes 5-0. And yeah. the reason why I'm asking that question is Washington cannot seem to win a Stanley Cup. And they like I I don't I can't remember the last time they they went to the finals. It's been a really long time since they have. I don't think it's it's been well over 30 years, I would say. So um in your opinion, is this the year that they do this? I I think that with a team making the Stanley Cup finals is an achievement. But for a team like the Washington Capitals, it's not enough. You have too much talent to be happy with just making it to the final. And I think that's going to be the biggest, oh, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest problem. They're in the toughest division in the NHL as it is. So if they can make it out of the Metropolitan Division unscathed, make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's say they play the Habs in the in the East Finals. They're going to route the Habs. The Habs live and die off Carey Price, and we all know Pacioretty, Procanics. They're not going to show up in the playoffs. If they can make it to the finals, imagine them up against a team like Minnesota or Chicago or even a team like San Jose or even the Oilers. I, I think that people are really sleeping on how good the Oilers actually are. Yeah. Uh, Toronto was oh, another team. Tony, you're cutting this out for sure. Pardon me? You're cutting out. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. In terms of overall talent, what the Oilers have, uh, with Connor McDavid, the sky's the limit. And I think that for the Maple Leafs, given the talent that they've picked up over the years, uh, the draft picks that they have now, and the fact that John Tavares' contract is actually due at the end of this year, and he's been talking about wanting to play for Toronto, they have the cap space to get a player like John Tavares. Yeah. And if they get a John Tavares, they are an Eastern Conference contender right then and there. Well, here's the thing. Ever since Austin Matthews came on board, the guys he got his 24th goal last night. Uh, goal or point, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was goal, but still, yeah. it's it's kind of like this. I I would say the Toronto Maple Leafs are about two pieces away, if not one, from making the finals. Yeah, if if Frederick Anderson can play like a Stanley Cup goaltender, uh-huh. if he can perform to the level that everybody expects he can perform at, they can make it to the Eastern Final, Eastern Conference Finals, if not the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, and I think that. The way that they built their team, and with a coach like Matt, Mike Babcock, I think it just speaks volumes about how good he really is. He just knows how to win. He he reminds me a lot of um, of a Scotty Bowman almost. That you put him on any team, and he just finds a way to make the team better. Now, granted, Scotty Bowman has eleven Stanley Cup championships, but I just feel like Mike Babcock is just that good of a coach. So okay, I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna play uh, if. The playoffs started today. Okay, I'm gonna start. Okay. I'm gonna start in the East. Who do you have? Washington versus Toronto. I'm talking. I'm talking first versus eight. Um. Well, actually, it would end up being Washington against someone within their own division. So if Toronto got bumped down into the wild card position, it was Washington versus Toronto. Mm-hmm. I would give it to Washington. They have the playoff experience. Uh, the Maple Leafs, the, the young studs on there, the William Nylanders, the Mitch Marners. Uh, the Austin Matthews, they don't have that playoff experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think playing a team like Washington will be good for them for the long run. But if Washington plays Toronto in the playoffs this year, Washington takes that round in five. Okay, so because um, I'm going ba- based on conference, right? So yeah. let's just play hypothetically here. Pittsburgh okay. versus Philadelphia. Oh, I got Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh um, yeah. Philadelphia's goaltending is just so shaky. They got talent elsewhere, talent on the on the D line, talent in terms of their forwards. Jacob Borchek, Claude Giroux, great forwards. Uh, Shane Goss is there, their defenseman. He's forty six points last year in I think sixty seven games this year. He's a minus nineteen has been sat out his last three games, healthy scratch. Um, so it's disappointing to see that their defense and 
Okay, so um, another one is I'm gonna jump off to the e to start to the west, Minnesota versus Los Angeles. Ooh, that would be a good matchup. Um, if Los Angeles can get Jonathan Quick back, I feel like they can give Minnesota a run for their money. Really, but Minnesota's team is so strong and. Remember when Evan Dubnik was a shitty goalie yeah. and nobody cared about him? And he was on the Oilers and he just wasn't performing. Yeah. I don't know how he became the goalie that he is today. I don't know either. It blows my mind that he's as good as he is. And I, I love L.A. They're my second favorite team. But if I was seeing them play against Minnesota in the first round, I'd say Minnesota would take it in six. Okay, what about San Jose versus Nashville? Pecorine isn't the goalie that he used to be two years ago, and we all think that he is. Um, the defense is great. Their forwards know how to score, but their goaltending isn't up to par. Uh, the goal differential is only a plus seven. San Jose is a plus 22. Um, so I think that they have – San Jose would probably make a run at him. Uh, Martin Jones is a better goalie than Pecorine, in my opinion. Um, so I see San Jose taking that in five. Maybe, maybe Nashville can push it to six, but I would see San Jose taking that one. Okay, perfect. I want to thank uh, Tony for giving us the opportunity to speak on the NHL and his knowledge on the NHL. Tony, it was lovely having you, and tune in next time. Hopefully, we can have you next time. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Okay, so that was Tony talking about the NHL. Let's give up Vashizi. I'm in Vashis to call and see what he's got to talk about on WWE. Of course, he was just watching SmackDown, so let's check it out. He said he was sick. Hopefully he's not nasally. Hello? I'm in Vashis. Hey, how's it going, Greg? Good, you? You're live yeah, on the air. Good. You're live on the air, right. and we want to know your opinion on... What happened on Raw and what's going to happen on WrestleMania? Uh, sure. Okay. Where do you want to? Uh, maybe, wanna start? maybe in SmackDown. So, I read this today. Breaking news: Seth Rollins will return in WrestleMania to face Triple H. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was awesome because the thing is, they, the angle that they have is awesome going into WrestleMania. Yeah, it's a good storyline for sure. Uh, I'm not. Like, I, I did hear that from, uh, I think Dave Meltzer was saying that uh, Seth Rollins should be back. I'm not too sure how, how like, you know, if he's going to be 100% or not, but I'm hoping that he is so that they can put together, like, a decent, like, uh, mid-card kind of match. And uh, I think they can, put on, they can probably tear the house down, but uh, that depending on how healthy he is, hopefully, you know, he doesn't get injured during his recovery and that sort of thing. So... Uh, let's jump over to SmackDown because I know you were just watching SmackDown right now. You said Cena versus Orton. It was a slobber knocker. Uh, tell us what happened and uh, what's your opinion on the Elimination Chamber match? I think basically how they're setting this up, like uh, wrestling uh, storyline wise, is that like uh, Cena and Orton, the storyline, it's something of the past. It's a nostalgia thing. So I think they were just trying to give the fans justice by having this match on a live SmackDown. Where I think, hey, we're still going to have Cena and Orton, but I don't think that's going to be a match for WrestleMania. The reason for that is I think that they're trying to set up a feud with uh, Orton and, and Bray Wyatt because my opinion is that at the Elimination Chamber, uh, Bray Wyatt's going to come out with the championship and yeah, he's going to be like a first time uh, WWE champion for him. Yeah, that's exactly what my thoughts are. So <laughs> if if that's the case, we have Bray Wyatt as the champ and Randy Orton going to face him and that's the breakup of their relationship. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. one match that we, we're thinking of the same thing. Let's talk about Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is facing Braun Strowman at Fastlane. And yeah. basically, they him and him and the Undertaker had some kind of a chemistry at Royal Rumble. Do you think that Taker will face Roman Reigns at uh, at uh, WrestleMania? Yeah, I think I think it's going to be Undertaker versus Roman Reigns because uh, I 
think you're right. Like Undertaker needs like a big time opponent, and WWE is still pushing Roman Reigns pretty hard. So I think they're trying to push him, not from a Mike standpoint, but more from like a uh, like worker standpoint, from like a wrestling standpoint. So if he can prove himself as a worthy wrestler in front of like uh, in with the with like the Demon Undertaker, um, then maybe and maybe they they think that the fans will start to appreciate Roman Reigns and turn him into the fa- into their favor. I do agree that that's probably what happened, is that, like, there has some chemistry, and I can see Undertaker either interfering in that match in uh, um, Aslan, or maybe in the, in the Raw the next night he can challenge him for a media. So it is something that's a possibility for sure. So, so um, we got Goldberg versus Kevin Owens at Fastlane. Yeah. Um and Goldberg versus The Rock or sorry Brock at WrestleMania. Um yeah. what do you what do, uh, like what do you what do you think's going to happen between him and Kevin Owens? It's hard to say exactly. Like the thing is Brock Lesnar and Goldberg they don't need the title to declare their match as like a marquee big event, right? Like they don't need a title to be like oh it's for the championship it's for the universal championship. Yeah. But, like, that being said, I think the main point of having Goldberg versus Kevin Owens is to probably get Goldberg some ring, uh, like, some ring time to get him into an actual match. And I think a side part of it is that they're either going to have... There's, I think there's going to be some sort of interference in the match of either Brock Lesnar or Chris Jericho. And my, uh, my guess is that they're going to try to set up a storyline with Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens for WrestleMania, like best friend versus best friend, just, yeah. to, just to kind of spice it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I want to thank you for uh, uh, joining us today. I know you're sick. We'll t- hopefully have you in next time, and we'll talk more on uh, hopefully what happened after the uh, Elimination Chamber and Fastlane. Yeah, sure. I look forward to it. Okay, take care. Okay, so that's all about the time that we have for the Jag Manga podcast. We talked to four different people, uh, record breaking in on the Jag Manga podcast. We talked to four different people and basically talked about NBA, NHL, and the WWE. It is February 7th, snowy day tomorrow as well. I will be picking up the snow. Tune in next time on the Jag Manga podcast.